Last year I did a bunch of videos called amoeba pendants. It's basically like this free form wire frame and then you just put a bunch of little beads in the middle and kind of string them in the middle with thinner wire and it comes out looking like a single celled organism. These are gonna be similar, but this is even easier. Basically, I'm just gonna use 18 gauge wire, just two and a half feet. We're gonna be as simple as possible. So two and a half feet, basically a little less than a meter. We're gonna say, say uh, three fourths of a meter, if you do meter, if you live in meter land. And that's it. And, and then five beads, but you can do anything. You can do seven beads, you can do four, three. I'm, I like I found this pattern I just like it it's I do one eight millimeter bead and I do four six millimeter it's basically like the eight millimeter is like the size of a chickpea or a garbanzo bean and then the six millimeters are like the size of green peas so it's pretty easy um, and then whatever wire you use I'm using this antique brass it's nice and or vintage bronze it's nice and like earthy it's kind of a, a yellowish brownish earth tone and I got my I got my earth tone beads to go with it nice and simple a little colorful a little bit of color in there but not like anything too super bright or anything so here we go and I'm not even gonna measure I'm just gonna try to estimate that's you know about two and a half feet cut it Ooh. start with my eight millimeter Put it right in the middle of the entire wire. Pull the two ends together roughly just to make sure it's in the middle there, right? And then I just lock it in. And it, that just means like, just wrap the, the wire like that. And it doesn't have to be good or anything, you know, just, just lock it in, right? Then I just pick another bead and string it on. And um, I don't go all the way down. I, I go about, I leave about an inch like that, or two centimeters, and then I just lock in the next one. And it's so easy right so easy right boom pick another one slide it down lock it in and you can kind of alternate over under if you feel like it really it's not gonna matter too much so so I'll take this and I'll have two coming up this way and then I'll have the other two coming up the other way it's real simple right All right, so then I'd basically just mush them into a pendant shape. I like to have the biggest one at the bottom because that gives weight. So I just kind of mush them up like this. And here's where if you want to, looks like a cool bug. <laughs> if you want to like move them around, you can roll them to make each, make one closer or farther away from the top. You roll it up or down once it's locked in like this. So that's kind of cool. Like. And I kind of like them to stagger, like, you know, kind of go as, as they go up. So there's like one definite at the top, but you can kind of move them around any which way you want. And now, once you kind of kind of got them where you want them as far as, and don't worry too much, don't stress too much about this part because it's going to look different as you move it onto the next part. Get these two wires at the top, right? And move them together like this and then roll them around your finger or you can put a pencil in there or a pen or something but roll them around like this and make a loop that's going to be your top loop of your pendant real simple right you can make it small or big it doesn't matter i like to have it about the same size as like one of the six millimeter beads and now we lock this in place by folding it over like that and then now we're just gonna have fun with these two wires. We can bring, we can have each wire go separately. We can have them go together, but basically we're just wrapping around and around, and we're just gonna strengthen these parts and make some cool swirls, and then get back up to the top if we need to, and maybe wrap around the top loop and tuck the the last little ends in there. So you can give yourself a lot of wire if you want to make crazy fancy loops, but I find limiting the amount of wire keeps it simple and keeps you from making it too busy. So we're just. I'm feeling like you just go with what you feel like. I feel like having a, a curve come down here and then like this, right? Like that. If you see that? And now every once in a while you fold it over just to lock in what you just did. And then 
what else do you want to do? I'm, I'm going to have this one come around here again. I'm separating them now. I'm going to have them do their own thing. This one's going to come around here. This one is going to come around here like this. That's kind of cool, right? And maybe come around again like that. It's kind of different. Let's get this one out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. So I just had this one curve back up in an S and it's kind of dancing around the beads. So you can kind of, you know, let it form and do what it wants. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lock it in right there. This one, now I'm going to play with this one some more. He's make that curve a little bigger around that stone. Emphasize that more. Give it a little more weight at the bottom. And, and then I'm feeling it. It's coming up. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to um, parallel. Oops, let me let you guys see. It's going to parallel these two right here. And I'm about to run out of wire. So once you're about to run out of wire, so I'm going to lock it in one more time right here. And I, this time I'm going to go all the way through, really lock it good. Not just bending it over, but I'm actually going to wrap it all the way through. This is the first time I picked up the pliers this whole time. I actually didn't know where I put them. So I'm going to pull this, pull this nice and tight through there. Now I just have a tiny bit left. I can't make it up to the top to tuck it in, so it's going to end in a swirl. You know, I'd like it to be a bigger swirl, but it's going to be a little baby swirl, and that's okay, because I only have a tiny bit of wire left. So it's barely going to be a swirl. It's more going to be like a little, almost like a little tiny loop. But that's like a cute little way to end it, and that ends it safely. And we'll just swirl it a little more. So you're really not even going to see it. It's going to be like a swirl in the back. Maybe I can move it to the front, because that will tuck it even more, and that'll be even better. So just kind of muscle it back into the front there now you can see it that's cool and you can change which side is the front or back sometimes i'll be all done a piece and then i'll I'll flip it over and i'll be like oh that looks cooler on that side and the, these are reversible too which is also fun so i have a little bit of wire left on this side to play with right so what am i going to do i think i'm gonna come back around there mimic that curve again that's kind of cool and I guess neither one of these are going to make it up to the top like I originally thought. That's okay. Again, it's limiting the amount of wire because it, it forces you to be very definitive in your movements. So that's that's kind of fun. Kind of, yeah, I like that. I like that movement. It's it's smooth. And I just kind of go with the wire sometimes if you're not sure. So now now I'll be able to make a slightly bigger swirl to end this one. I'm going to... I think I scratched the end there with one of the beads. I'm just going to cut a little bit off there. And be very firm when you're rolling your swirl. You don't want to slip. If you're too loose, you'll end up slipping and scratching the wire. And I'm going to tuck it right in the middle there. Just press it in. Make sure it stays in its spot. And we're all done. Isn't that fun? I had no idea for this plan. You saw it. I just It just came out as I did it. And I'm happy with this. Now I'm just going to kind of shape it. Now, do, Which side do I like better? Both sides look good. I do like this side better as the front. So I'm just going to kind of mold it and shape it into this shape. I'm making it straight, but also kind of bending over a little bit so it lays flat. I want it to lay flat on the person's chest. So just keep putting it flat on the table and making sure it's good. And that's it. Now I can turn this a quarter turn and put my chain through or a cord. Or I can leave it like this and put a jump ring or a couple jump rings, three jump rings, whatever, and then put the cord. Either way, I like the look with the jump rings. It adds like another dimension. And that's just my personal thing. So.